Hey there! I was asked to do a video and this is a long time ago so I do apologize because I think at this point it's probably more than a year ago but I was asked to do a video on the difference between number five, number six, number seven, number eight nibs. It took me a long time to do that but better late than never as we say in Dutch. Uh, so what I would like to do today is I've inked up a couple pens with different sizes of nibs. I will first talk you through what the difference is. When fountain pen people say this is a number six nib, that's a number eight nib, what does that mean? I'll show you some examples of each. I'll do a writing sample with each. I'll talk about the, in my mind, complete lack of systematic... Um, things you can say about these nibs like it is not the case that a number eight nib is always broader always wetter always flexier always whatever i don't think that's the case i'll talk about why that is and then we'll talk about why people all want number eight nibs now and that's it i hope that's going to be useful let's get started okay so i have right outside of the view of the camera, a number five, a number six, a number seven, and a number eight nib. Now, if you are unfamiliar with this terminology, before I just dive in, we first have to define what we're talking about and what makes a nib number five or number six. And if you're new to fountain pens, you may be very confused by, by all this, and how could you not be? Okay, so I thought what I would do is really demonstrate to you how this works. Okay, here I have an, an Enso XS uh, pen this is very small. It's, it's meant to be a pocket pen and um, I know this is a number five nib, but how do I know that? Well, I know that I'm just going to disassemble it quickly here um, I know this because I'm going to pull the nib and feed out now be very very careful when you do this some nibs pull out some nibs screw out some nibs are kind of more or less glued into place, which is not very common I know in this particular pen the nib and feed, uh, sorry, they pull out. So I'm going to hold this tightly. I'm going to pull straight, not twist and turn anything. I don't want anything out of alignment. And now I have two pieces. I have a feed and I have a nib. And when I say this is a number five nib, how do I know that? Well, first of all, what I know is that this is a Bach nib. And the reason I know that, there are, there are two big nib manufacturers in the world, Bach and Yovo. The way I know this is a Bach is that it actually has that animal on here, so I, I can already tell. But that's not really relevant. Now I take the feed, and I take a pair of calipers. Okay, so I have here the feed, yeah, and I'm going to measure the diameter. And what do I see? It depends a little bit on where you do it. I'm going to try to make this as, as accurate as I can make it. That looks about right. If I really squeeze this together, it's, it's somewhat soft plastic, I get a measurement of about five millimeters. This five point, this round to 5.1, okay? That's where the number five comes from. The diameter of the feed in millimeters. So now if we do some simple, very simple, I don't even think it's arithmetic, but if we just think about our numbers, if that is number five, then you will agree with me that number six is bigger and a number seven nib is bigger and a number eight nib is bigger yet. After all, every time the diameter of the feed um, increases by a millimeter. I'm actually just I'm doing all my work because think about this. Uh, I'm just taking out my calipers again. If this was about five millimeters, right? You can also tell that I work with calipers for a living. Obviously, I always fiddle with these. I'm sorry. But if I make this go up, 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 right, then you can tell we can do it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. That would then, I should probably put this down, shouldn't I? I'm so DIY. Okay. Okay, so that would then be about six millimeters, right? But now if I keep going, look at how big relative to number five, I'm going to leave it at that not to waste your time, how big a number eight nib would be. There would be a much bigger diameter, right? The three millimeters does actually make a difference. Okay, so in other words, the higher the number, the bigger the nib. And this is your reference point, right? That would be a number five. I could have done the same thing with a number six nib or a number seven nib. Okay, in my mind, the most common sizes that you will see are number five, number six 
and number eight. Okay? Many pens, here is, here's another pen. Uh, this is an inventory pocket pen uh, that I actually have inked up. This is another number five nib. This is a Schmidt nib. Now, if you compare the two, you'll see that they're a little different. Bear in mind, this bock is in the section a little deeper. But if I were to pull these and I would measure the two feeds, I would get a very similar measurement because they're both number five nibs, right? So they would be about the same size. Now, if I move up a size, I'm just going to post this. That was one of the reasons I, I did this. It posts very securely so I can put this down and it won't roll too much. I'm sorry the nib is not aligned perfectly to the camera, but you'll forgive me, I'm sure. Now, here I have a Leonardo uh, Momento Zero Grande. This is not a number eight nib. Some of these have number eight nibs, but this is, ain't one of them. Okay, I'm also going to post this so it won't roll. Now, this is a number six nib. Bear in mind, this is not seated as deeply in the section as this number five is, but if I align just the tips, right, then you can see that the number six nib is quite a bit bigger. Again, were I to measure the diameter of the feet of this nib, it would be six millimeters, okay? Then there is, and there is another difference, by the way, um, this is steel and this is a rose gold nib, but whether it's gold or gold plated or rhodium plated or titanium, that really shouldn't matter. Five is five millimeters, six is six millimeters, etc. Then we have this pen, and this is a little special. This is an old win, uh, not one of the pen family old wins, but one of the original old wins. Sorry, just a sip of tea for my voice. Um, this is a number seven pen, a number seven nib, and that is pretty rare. This doesn't really post, so I'm going to have to fiddle a little bit with this. Forgive me for the fumbling here, but there we go. This is a number seven nib, and the only brand I have seen number seven nibs on is Oldwin. Um, I, I actually don't know if they make their own nibs, um, but in any case, you at this point I'm sure understand the logic, and maybe you could zoom in a little bit, there we go. Um, this would be a feed with a seven millimeter diameter, right? Now I'll add one more pen to this, <clears throat> one more nib to this, this is an Armando Simoni Club Bologna, Bologna Extra, sorry. And this is an actual number eight nib. Now it's a slightly special number eight nib. It has a, a modified feed um, to be more flexy, but that hardly matters because it still is an eight millimeter diameter feed. And this one really doesn't pose, so I have to hold it. I'll try to keep it as still as I can. That would be a number eight nib. Now, as you can see, the size just goes up, right? The size of the nibs, how could it not? If the size, or sorry, if the diameter of the feed increases, the feed of the nib has to increase, otherwise it wouldn't fit on top of it. I mean, look at this size of this feed. Now think about me taking this number five nib again and trying to somehow put this on that feed. It wouldn't fit, right? This is not gonna work. It's, it's not, it doesn't have the, round cur the right curvature. It's, it's gonna sit on top. It's, it's not going to work properly. So in other words, that's an issue that we face. Okay, that pen was rolling away, but it didn't fall, so it's okay. All right, so here we have this, right? Here we have our four types of nibs. Now, sometimes you see sizes in between. Fountain Pen Revolution, for example, sells pens uh, that have five and a half uh, nibs. Well, I'm sure you understand what that means. That means that the diameter of the feed is five and a half millimeters, right? On some vintage pens or super, super tiny pens, uh, you sometimes see a number four nib, okay? So that also happens. Now, what I would like to do next, and then we can talk a little bit more about whether nib size truly matters, Right, but well, what I thought we would do is, uh, I'll, I'll put this, this paper sideways, I'll zoom out a little bit, just do a side-by-side -side writing comparison. Now, unfortunately, I mean, I had some of these pens inked. I, I don't have the same ink in them, but I know this doesn't make for a perfect scientific comparison, but what I'm about to say is not perfectly scientific either. So, here we have that inventory pocket pen. And this is a, I want to say it's a fine nib, but I, I forget over the years, it's a finer medium and I, I can't see the mark here. Um, I'm, I'm not going to write a whole lot with it. I'm just trying to demonstrate a couple of points here. 
So this is a steel nib. It's not very bouncy, but it is a nice writer. And that would be number five. Then I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I will move up a notch. I have here a Leonardo. Uh, this is a Momento Zero Grande. And this is a, uh, an 18, no, is it? No, 14K, sorry, medium. <clears throat> this was um, Mont Blanc Irish Green. This is Leonardo Blue. I tried to have approximately similar nib grades, so in other words, fine, medium, medium, not a double broad and a triple broad, because I mean, that would make it even worse in comparison. <clears throat> I already have different inks in them. Then I have a number seven nib, that would be the Oldwin Classic. Uh, the ink is SBRE Brown. And this is a 14K, also I think fine medium. I don't think these get, I think they only are like a one size fits all type approach. And I'm not exactly sure why I never finished the sentence. I'm sure you were wondering that, I, I don't know, but I'm trying to keep it on kind of the same level. And here we have the um, Armando Simoni Club Bologna Extra. This is an 18K and this is their one size fits all Magic Flex. But I'm using this without any pressure, so in my mind in this particular version uh, it, it writes like a fine. So again, all, I, I wanted all the nib grades to be about comparable. The final question that, this is also SBRE Brown by the way, um, the final question, and, and, and that's I think the most important one for us to answer is, so is there any difference? Is there any difference in a number eight, number seven, number six, number five nib in writing experience? I think it's an impossible question to answer because I think the real question is, well, that what, what pen are you using? A Magic Flex is going to write quite differently from a um, a very stiff, rigid number eight nib. Are there certain things I have found over the years? I have found the Bock number eight. That there are, as I said, it's the, the two main nib companies are Bock and Yovo. Um, and now I want to say that Yovo actually stopped producing their number eight nibs. I don't actually know if that's true, if that's a figment of my imagination. In any case, the Bock nibs come in different materials. Here is a Bock number eight, but this is titanium, okay, which has a slightly different writing experience. That's why I didn't want to put it in. This is all steel or gold. I have quite frankly been unable to find any systematic variation in nib sizes. I cannot say for the life of me and therefore a number eight is always smoother or is always springier or is always wetter or is always drier. Don't look at it that way. Don't look at it as well number eight has a bigger nib so it must have a richer flow than a number five nib. I don't believe that is true. What I will say is the Bock nibs, sorry the Bock number eight nibs which is what ASC uses, always come with an ebonite feed. And ebonite has really good flow characteristics, which is one of the reasons people love ebonite feeds so much. So from that perspective, you could see some differences, but that is then not so much the nib as it is the feed that, as the name suggests, feeds that specific nib. So that is probably the way I would look at that. Final thing I will say, because again, I see no systematic, I just don't see any systematic changes between number five, number six, etc. Um, final thing I will say is this. Why do people want number eight nibs? I think that is because people are prone to be interested in fads. I recorded a video on that a while ago about, about sort of fads in the fountain pen world. 
When I got interested in fountain pens 2010, all of a sudden it was Flex. Everybody wanted Flex. Noodlers launched its original nib creeper around that time. Everybody wanted Flex nibs. And then it became inks with shade. And then it became inks with shimmer. And then it became inks with sheen. And given that, it always has to be an SH when it comes to ink. The next will be inks with pieces of things in them, I guess. Anyway. This is how the fountain pen community works, and I think this is largely how human beings work. We just like something new, something fancy. And for some reason, we have now latched on to the number 8 nib, because it's big and it looks cool. And fountain pen people often like a nib and like showing off their nib, because that's what makes a fountain pen so nice. Look, look at how nice that nib looks. And I will say, it's a little easier to show off a number 8 nib than it is to show off a number 5 nib. There's just more of the nib if it's a number 8 nib. And I think that's the only reason that we like uh, those nibs so much. It's just, it's hot right now. People have, dis have discovered that there is such a thing as a number 8 nib. Now everybody wants number 8 nibs. I had a conversation with a, a well-known larger American pen maker, and I will not um, name him here because that was kind of an off the records communication. I asked him, I have a Yovo number eight nib, you use Yovo nibs, can you build me a pen around that? And he said, no, I can't because I don't like those nibs. They're so big that I have to make the sections that I make so thin that I find them too prone to cracking. Now, I know that other companies do actually uh, use um, uh, a number eight nibs. So, I mean, I, I, I know it's possible, obviously, but I mean, not everybody is equally in favor of them. That's all I'm trying to say. We like them. The fountain pen community likes them. We have decided that we like them. And, uh, and, and, and that's pretty much it. And that's okay. That is perfectly okay. Right? <clears throat> I'm not trying to, this is not a jab at anyone or something. I'm just saying we're, we're prone to that as human beings are. This, I would say, is my overview of five, six, seven, eight nibs. I hope. <clears throat> that this has been useful maybe this has clarified questions that you have and um, if you have any other questions then let me know i hope this was useful and uh, i'll gladly see you later bye bye